Welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today I want to talk to you guys about manually ending your listings and then relisting them using the sell similar option into your store to make them new listings. If you know what I'm talking about, we're going to talk about the reasons why you should be doing this, the reasons why it works, and how often you should be doing it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about by the end of the video, you're going to know what I'm talking about and why it works and why you should be doing this. I've done videos on this on the past, including screen shares on how to do it, uh, but today's video is going to be a little bit different than any video I've done on this in the past because I'm going to approach this in a different way and talk about this a little bit differently than I ever have before. This is one of the best business practices that I do teach, but I've never approached it in such a way as I'm going to do today. This topic keeps coming up in the Facebook group as new members join, as new resellers join the group, as new people to eBay join the group. And the question keeps coming up mainly as to why would I want to do this? Should I be doing this? And how do I do it? And I see a lot of folks saying it isn't necessary. And I absolutely think it's necessary. And I see a lot of folks saying it's a waste of time. And I don't think it is a waste of time. So I wanted to talk to you today about why I think it's necessary and why I don't think it's a waste of time and explain to you very simply why I feel it's necessary and why it's not a waste of time in a way that I think everyone can understand. The first thing I want to throw out there is a lot of people explain this as a way to trick Cassini into believing number one, that you're active every day and believing, number two, that you're putting new listings up or that some of your old listings are new. And while this is true, unfortunately, the word trick has negative connotations attached to it. When we think of someone tricking someone or the word trickster, it has a negative connotation with it. We think of Loki. Loki traditionally is a god of tricking people or being a trickster. He's not necessarily a villain, but he's an anti-hero. And he's not necessarily a positive superhero or a person in a good light. We think of trick or treat. If you don't give me a treat, I'm going to trick you. I'm going to do something bad to you. Um, we think of just being a trickster as being someone with malice or doing something that isn't quite pleasant. So the word trick isn't, I guess, a good word to maybe associate with the practice of ending your listings and relisting them. Because I think a lot of folks, when they think, oh, well, I'm tricking Cassini into thinking I'm active or I'm tricking her into thinking these are new listings, maybe that word tricking is bringing along with it some of those negative ideals or negative thoughts. So let's take the word trick out of it so that all of the negative is taken out of it as well. Let's say we are being active. We're taking listings and ending them and starting them over. And by doing that, we are actually being active. So we're not tricking Cassini. We're being active. We're doing something with our store. We're not necessarily putting brand new, never before seen listings in that Cassini's never seen, but we're doing something. It's along the lines of when you refresh your store. It's along the lines of when you tweak your listings. If you go into your active listings and you change your keywords around your title or you change your photos around, uh, you're not doing new listings. You're not putting brand new listings in, but you're active. You're doing something, you're touching stuff. And Cassini sees that as activity. So you're not necessarily tricking her, you're just showing her, hey, I'm doing something. I'm touching stuff, I'm active, I'm doing things. And she sees you as doing things, being active. So you're not tricking her, you're just not listing new items. You're touching your old stuff and making it new. And she sees it as activity. 
You are technically taking old listings and making them new listings. That's not a trick. You're not tricking Cassini into thinking, oh, hey, my Miss Me jeans are a brand new listing because technically you are taking old listings and making them new. Let me explain. When you take old listings and you end them manually and you don't allow them to roll over on their own through the good till canceled listing system that eBay has, you're giving them a brand new item number. So they're technically a new listing. That's not a trick. You're not tricking Cassini. You're utilizing the system to do something that's best for you. That's not a trick. If I list this pen on eBay today on March 16, and it gets an item number, we're gonna use a small number just for the ease of this example. eBay gives this pen the item number of 13, and it gives it 30 days, you know, to sell. And come April 16th, this pen still hasn't sold. The Good Till Canceled system that eBay has in place will relist this pen and it will still have item number 13 on it, and it will relist it. But the thing is, is that will count against my store subscription listings for April. So it takes away from the amount that I get with my store subscription. And if I have any left that I pay for with my store subscription, it goes against that count. And if I'm out of store subscription listings that I get with my subscription, then I pay for that listing. We all understand that, right? But it keeps the same item number. So Cassini sees this as a pen that had 30 days to sell. It didn't. It rolled over. It's now on its second month, meaning that this is now on its second time of 30 days. So it's stale. So it is now less attractive. It is now less um, sought after. It is stale. It is now on month two. And that's how the system works and that is how Cassini sees it. Now let's say this is a long tail item that typically takes three months to sell, maybe four months. So as we go into May towards the 16th, it still hasn't sold. So it rolls over again. It automatically relists itself and it counts against my listings for the month of May. It is still item number 13. Cassini sees it going into its third month. So it sees it as being even less attractive, even less sought after. So it is now on month three and it's getting pushed even further down on the searches. So every time that this pen is going to roll over, Cassini will understand that and it will know how long it's been listed and the algorithm and Cassini will know how long this pen has been around based on its item ID number, which will be 13, which they have absolutely, they have longer ID numbers than that. I'm using 13 just to have an easy way to describe this to you. So uh, that's what I wanted to explain to you. You're not tricking Cassini at all. You're just using the system to your advantage to help yourself as a seller. Every time that this pen reaches the end of a 30-day marker period and rolls over so that they can, um, eBay can take away a count on your listings for the month or charge you for a listing for the month, Cassini understands that and knows how long this has been around. And every time this goes around another month, Cassini's counting one month, two months, three months. And every time it becomes less attractive, it becomes more stale, it becomes less of a sought after item. So it's getting pushed further and further and further and further down in those searches. Every day when you sit down and you put new listings in, Cassini sees those as brand new items. So it goes, boop. If you just listed this pen, boop. High, high, high up in those searches. Day one, day two, day three, day four. Do you see what I'm saying? So when this comes to the end of its first month, 
and you manually end it on your own, it's no longer in the system. That item number 13 no longer exists. Then you sell similar and you bring it back in as a brand new listing. It's now got item number 113. Boop, it's a new listing. Cassini doesn't see this as item number 13 anymore. That does not exist. It doesn't see it as being on month two, as something that no one bought in month one, as being less attractive, as less sought after, as a less, um, as a stale item. It now sees it as a new item. This is 113 now. So the unfortunate thing that we all have to face, those of us that sell used clothing, and those of us especially that sell plush, we have long tail items. And I have done enough research on the back end in writing the clothing guides and the plush guides and the sell-through rate guides that go along with those with Keith. We have done so much research in writing those guides. And we know the sell-through rate on most items, especially with these clothing and plush, the average items take three to six months to sell. Most take longer than six months. That's just a fact. It just is. Electronics, things like that, those flip fast. So if you're not selling electronics, if you're not selling items with a fast turnover rate, you're selling long tail items, you're selling used clothing, you're selling plush, you're selling anything that's going to take over three months to sell, six months to sell, nine months to sell. Every time that listing flips over automatically on that good till canceled system that eBay has set up, Every time it flips over and adds a month, the algorithm, Cassini, sees that as having another month tacked on and it becomes more stale. It becomes less attractive and it gets pushed down in those searches. So it's not a matter of you're tricking Cassini. You're just utilizing the coding on the back end. You're utilizing the algorithm to your advantage. If you know that you have an item that is going to be long tail, if I have a World of Warcraft plush that I'm waiting for an adult to come along that's going to spend 60 bucks on a plush and it's going to take me three, four months to find that adult, um, I want my plush to be at the top of the searches every month because I might find that adult in one or two months if my item's at the top of the searches. But if it keeps getting pushed down, I'm probably gonna wait the whole three to four months and maybe even longer if I'm competing or being pushed down. Does that make sense to everyone? Um, a lot of the reason I think a lot of our items personally sell a little bit quicker than they should, and you guys know that from a lot of our What Sold videos, if you watch them, you'll hear me say all the time in my What Sold videos how fast items sell, and I, I always say this sold faster than it should have. A lot of our long tail items do sell quicker. I think it's because I help them a lot. If I have a pair of jeans that typically would take six months for someone else to sell. Mine will sell in three to four months because I'm helping it. I don't let it sit for the whole six months and just keep rolling over on its own and getting pushed down in searches. I'm doing everything I can to help myself as a seller. And that includes ending listings manually before they end on their own and then selling some more to make them a new listing. I do all the best practices I teach you guys, all of them. The best keywords in the titles. I do free shipping or free returns. I do really great pictures. I do a top rated seller. I send thank you cards in the packages, making sure that we get good feedback. I do uh, store refreshes, which we're coming out with a video in a couple of days on those to help you guys with that. But I, everything I've ever taught you guys on best business practices, we do. I do everything I can. I'm a firm believer in that. I don't think anything is a waste of time if it helps you sell more, if it helps you get better rankings in the searches. We run sales. We do best offers. We do promoted listings. None of that is a waste of time. If I could literally just put items in our store 
and walk away, set it and forget it, list it at a price I want and not have best offers on, never have to run a sale, never have to do a promoted listing, have shitty pictures and never do keywords um, and just walk away. Oh yeah, duh, I would. But unfortunately, eBay's playground isn't set up to do that. eBay's playground is not set. Even Poshmark's playground isn't really set up to do that. You have to share, right? Uh, Poshmark, you don't necessarily have to play games with promoted listings. You don't have to play the games with the algorithm so much and ending and selling similar. But with Poshmark, you have to share. You have to follow. You have to do all these other things on their um, platform to get sales. They expect offers and all that stuff. So every platform has something within it that you need to do to play the game, so to speak, to get the likes, to get the, um, not the likes, to get the sales. So I do. It just is. If I could throw my stuff at the platform and walk away and not have to do all of this, you guys, I really would. But we have discovered what it takes and we do it. And I teach all of that to you guys in these videos. And I teach all of that within the Facebook group. And I practice what I preach. And I really think it helps. So I don't think this is a waste of time. And this is exactly why it works. Because every time an item relists itself, at the end of those 30 days, it keeps the same item number and it becomes less desirable. Any item that's on its third, fourth, fifth month, and it's going to be, in a lot of cases, on its third, fourth, and fifth month if it's flush or used clothing because that's just how long those types of items take to sell. It just is. It's less desirable. It's stale. Cassini knows how long it's been around. It keeps track of that stuff, and you're getting pushed down in those searches. Even if you're doing all of those other things right, even if you're doing all of the other best practices, you're still getting pushed down in the searches, just a little bit less. If there's like 10 things in the best practices that you can be doing, and you're only doing nine, you're still not getting as, as good of a ranking in the searches as you can. Why wouldn't you do all 10? If you're ending it and relisting it every time it's about to end, every 30 days, it's getting a new item number. It's a brand new listing every 30 days. It's got a new thing. It's a new item number and it's pushed up. There is a caveat to, to this or an asterisk as it were. Um, items with multi-quantity listings and things that are replenishables, you would leave those alone and let those roll over because typically in those cases and in those instances, you're selling enough of them uh, often enough with return customers that you don't really have to worry about playing the games of getting new listings and new item numbers. Um, I mean, the best example I can think of is I know someone who has like a little um, part. It's like a washer part that people use um, I don't even know what they use it for because I'm not like a tool person or like a repair person, but it's just like a little bitty washer that people use as a tool and um, or a part for something. And he has like 500 of them listed at any given time and he can he's always getting them more of them from like the manufacturer and he's always putting more in. So his quantity is always up and he's always replenishing it. He's always getting more and he has return customers all the time who buy like five or 20 or 100 at a time, and he's always getting more. And so he's just replenishing it, and he has return customers always buying it, so he doesn't have to worry about playing the game. So if you have multi-quantity like that, or something that you can constantly replenish, or you have return customers, things like that, you don't have to worry about it. You can just let your listing roll and roll and roll. Um, and Cassini can do whatever she wants to push it down because people are looking for it. You know what I mean? But the one-offs, you're, you know, you only have one of the item and you're only ever going to have one of the item. You need to do this. It is not a waste of time. I assure you, it is not a waste of time. And I assure you, it is super dupes, super dupes important. The other thing I wanted to say that I hear a lot from people when I explain how to do this and why it's so important is the, but I have watchers on it. And the, but I will lose my watchers on it. Here's the thing, short of what I just talked about, the items that have multi-quantities, 
the items that have return customers and that you replenish all the time that have the watchers on it because they keep coming back and buying more of that item. Short of that exception, people are going to buy it or they're not. So if they're just hanging out as watchers, they're not going to buy it. Um, most watchers I have discovered or I have found are window watchers. They're just there to looky-loo. Um, some people watch items just because they're watching them to window shop. They're looky-loos. They're just there to look. A lot of watchers are other sellers who have an item similar to yours, and they want to see what you sell yours for. They're just watching your item to see what you get for yours because they want to know what they should list their item at. They want to see what you sell yours for. So they're just window watchers or other sellers. Um, what's the old expression? Poop or get off the pot. Really, if they haven't bought it yet, they're not going to. So it's okay to lose those watchers. Um, and yeah, if, when you relist the item, um, sell similar. That's how you get the new item number. So that's very super important. When you end it manually, if you do this in bulk, you have to do the sell similar. If you just relist, you're literally just relisting the item with that same old item number. So if I relisted, this would stay with 13 and you're defeating the purpose because he knows what this is. You have to sell similar to create it as a new listing. Um, but it will get a new item number and be a new listing. Um, you know, proof of that is we all the time get messages from folks who didn't act quick enough. If we had sent out offers, say, on Monday, come Wednesday or Thursday, by then we had ended and sold similar items. And we'll get a message from a buyer who says, hey, is this item still available? You had sent us an offer Monday or, you know, two days ago, and we looked for it and we can't find it. It's because it's a new item now and they can't find it. So we just send them an offer on the new listing and they'll take it and they'll buy it. But it's a brand new item. They can't even find it if they had an um, offer on the old item number. So it is an absolutely a new item. The next question, you guys, I know this video is getting pretty long, but this is a pretty important video. Um, so before I go, the next question I wanted to address is how often should I be doing this? How often are you having items about to end? We have 2,000 listings. I do it every morning. Um, I go into my seller hub every single morning and anything that's about to end within the next 24 hours, I snatch up, I bulk it, I do them in bulk. Um, should and, the, and should I change anything? You should. You should absolutely be taking this time to double check everything. You can check it in bulk. You don't have to go one by one. Uh, eyeball the titles. Make sure you don't have any typos. I caught a typo yesterday. We had a men's shirt listed as a MEBS, M-E-B-S. It was a MEBS shirt instead of a men's shirt. We had a good giggle. I'm like, hey, Keith, are you selling MEBS shirts now? Um, but yeah, eyeball your titles. Make sure there's no uh, typos in there. You can, in bulk, lower your prices by like 5% if you want to, 1% um, if you want. You can change up your pictures. You can go one by one. If you don't have a lot, like if you only have like a couple hundred listings, so you're only ending like five a day, you can go one by one and tweak titles and pictures, like switch your front vi your front, vi front video. Switch front photo out. Um, you can change as little or as much as you would like to. It is recommended to change something. Um, at the very, very least, just quickly eyeball them down and check for the typos and stuff. Um, I do it really quickly in bulk. I do like to lower the prices by like 5% um, just to kind of get things moving and grooving. I price really high, though. Everyone knows that I'm like the queen of pricing high. So um, me lowering by 5% once a month is okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I do it every morning. That's how often I need to do it. We have stuff ending every single day. So um, that's how often you need to do it, however often you have stuff ending. And the excuse of I don't have time, I, I don't 
think that's an excuse. If you don't have time to do this, then you don't have time to run a store. You don't have time to list, I guess. You don't have time to be a reseller. I mean, I make time for things that matter. And to me, this is super important. To me, this matters. This is just as important as listing. Because every item that rolls over on its own that gets squashed down in the searches is an item that probably could have sold that is now squashed down and not selling and is going to take longer to sell. Or maybe it was an item that you could have lowered the price on or caught a typo in or something and you didn't. I mean, this to me is super important. Um, it might not be to you, but I think it's important. And again, I don't teach you guys anything that we don't do and we're pretty successful. So um, I, I, guess I feel like I share everything with you guys that really works for us. If it didn't work for us, I wouldn't be teaching it. Um, so it's not like I teach you guys things that I feel is a waste of time. And again, it's not tricking Cassini, so get that negative word out of there. It's not a trick. You're using the tools, the, uh, the tools of the algorithm in the platform to the best of the ability that we all have. That's all it is. There used to actually be a time, guys, if you're new to eBay and you don't remember, or you weren't here for it, there used to be a time that everything wasn't good till canceled. You used to have a choice. You could choose to list good till canceled or for 30 days, and you didn't have to do all this. And we used to list everything for 30 days, and then it would end. And so every morning, I would go in, and stuff that had ended, I would sell some more and put them up as new listings. And then they decided to take that away from us, and everything had to be lifted, listed as good till canceled. And so we started going in and manually listing anything that was ending within 24 hours so that we could list it as new. That is why we do this, by the way, because back in the day, you had a choice. 30 days or good till canceled so that you could put everything as new every 30 days. Then they took it away from us. And this was the workaround that a lot of veteran and seasoned sellers found for that, for them taking that away from us. This was our workaround and it works. All right. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and don't forget to hit the thumbs up on your way out. And don't forget to subscribe. And hey, join our Facebook group, guys. It's called Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. Link down below. It's a free group. And until next time, go be productive. Go make some money. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are the best. Bye.